R.A. Fish and our School of World Drumming. Um, I think we're going to give you a little bit of background information about each of us and how our school actually started. But first I guess I'll talk a little bit about myself. Um, I grew up in Morgantown, West Virginia, believe it or not, and as a little kid went to dance school like every little kid does. And after that I ended up um, becoming part of the grade school band and at that time um, I really wanted to play a drum and I went home and told my father I want to play a drum and he said girls don't play drums nuh -uh. girls don't play drums pick something else so in a day or two I chose something else and I said well I think I'll just play a saxophone then mm -hmm. and he said oh I don't think so girls don't play saxophones either just don't do it so he said, well, but what you can play is a flute or a clarinet because that's what girls play. So I did and went through six years of junior high school, high school, played my clarinet only so that I could actually get to be a majorette in dance. Mm -hmm. So I did that as, as a kid. But later I came to Rhode Island and I just want to give you some artistic background. I, I became part of the uh, jewelry industry and was mentored by an incredible designer, Barbara Brown. And along the way that led into manufacturing and all that kind of stuff and did beautiful you know, jewelry that was shipped all over the world. And about 1990 I decided that I had like had enough of the jewelry industry and wanted to do something um, that was more artsy. So I decided to art, open up an art gallery and my art gallery's name was Handled With Care <clears throat> and I was there to help um, just the locals which really ended up to be a, an amazing, amazing place because we ended up with African art, I ended up with German art, it was, it was a, a really beautiful gallery and I had openings um, once about every four to five weeks. So anyway, during that period of time, um, I in, got to, to know Bob and um, we still continued to have the art gallery but um, it, it became quite a different little place. But in the meantime, um, after the art gallery, I decided that um, I really wanted to have something more metaphysical, so to speak. So I ended up deciding to take some classes. I did Reiki. Um, one class led to two and three, and before you knew it, I had uh, been certified in two schools of Reiki. And then that didn't seem like enough either, so I decided to... Um, try my hand at Eden Energy Medicine which was a two-year certification program and after I went to the program I started implementing all of this work into the work that Bob and I have been doing for a while but anyway Bob enough about me why don't you you know tell everybody about yourself oh thank you Diana uh, my name is Ari Fish Bob Fish and um, I started drumming in the eighth grade uh, with Lloyd Kaplan at Hubie Bain Junior High School in Cranston, Rhode Island. And uh, throughout junior high school and high school, I was in the jazz and concert marching bands. Uh, in my junior and senior years of high school, 
I uh, was the drum captain and I also made uh, Rhode Island All-State. Uh, I uh, eventually moved to Boston to go to Berklee College of Music and uh, studied with the uh, world-renowned uh, famous jazz drummer Alan Dawson and uh, he, uh, he had performed with uh, many notable people and taught very m many notable people. And um, so uh, after I, I, actually in Boston, uh, I worked with, uh, I met at Berkeley, I met international musicians. Uh, there was Victor Assis Brazil, uh, the Charlie Parker of uh, Brazil, uh, and uh, Claudio Carebe. And uh, I actually worked with them, studied with Harold Amaro Jr. drum set samba. From, and um, I also was the first drummer in the Pusset Dart band, uh, but we, we, the demo phase of their, you know, beginning. And uh, then I moved to New York City and I studied at the Alam School of Indian Classical Music. I got very interested in tabla. I'd heard uh, uh, Badal Roy, who was playing with Miles Davis, and I really wanted to meet him and I did actually meet him and he's a wonderful, wonderful man and encouraged me. And at the Alam School of Indian Classical Music I studied uh, under the direction of the director who, uh, Basant Rias, a road player, who was Aludin Khan's uh, youngest student. And uh, also my tabla teacher uh, was Vishwanath Mishra uh, from Varanasi. And um, so uh, I got to work with uh, some incredibly notable uh, musicians in New York City, uh, many of whom um, you may not know. Uh, these are the Drifters, uh, Mary Travers from uh, Peter, Paul and Mary, toured with them, and uh, also played at jazz clubs like the Blue Note and Sweet Basil with um, Perry Robinson, who was a Dombey Critic Poll winner. Also, I got to jam with Bob Marley, uh, and, and spent a little bit of time with him, uh, as well as I played a couple of gigs with Chet Baker, and um, oh, and I jammed with Buddy Miles as well, and oh, B.B. King. And uh, so uh, then I essentially moved back to Rhode Island uh, to help my mom, uh, who was elderly, uh, and uh, I met Diana, and uh, it just blossomed from there. She learned very, very quickly and uh, we uh, found ourselves on the artist rosters of the Rhode Island State Council of the Arts. Wow. Uh, we, uh, as well as the uh, BSA um, of Rhode Island, which is a very special arts for uh, children uh, with special needs. And uh, also, um, uh, we were on the artist roster of the New England uh, Foundation for the Arts, and we're part of their Nest Rasta, which is uh, a, uh, a fund uh, created to um, have artists in New England uh, touring. It's the New England State Touring Grant, and uh, it's something that people can apply to if they are interested in bringing us to their state outside of Rhode Island. And um, we, you know, we service, uh, as Diana mentioned, uh, special needs. Uh, her work has been incomparable. Um, I, I can't tell you how valuable it is in focusing uh, the energies and helping uh, the students to learn. Um, actually, you know, I really wanted to talk about a little bit about how, how we even got really got started, mm -hmm. and it's it was it was pretty amazing that. Um, I first met Bob and he's strolling down the hallway of my art gallery and he has a drum on his back and I didn't pay too much attention to that but then a few days later I hear this incredible drumming and I'm just like wow where is this coming from who's doing this so what I did was end up following that sound I closed my door and locked it up and found you downstairs and asked Bob to um, Please teach me. I need to know how to do this, and I want to know how to do it like now. I really, I really, really love this. So he graciously accepted, um, you know, my request and said, "Okay, when do we start?" So I was like, "Well, tomorrow will be great." So anyway, Bob comes up and started coming up two or three times a week to teach me um, rhythms on this doomback, and. You know, I would, as much as I wanted to learn the doomback, I would just constantly, like, fight with him. It was like, 
oh, don't come now, I'm too tired, I need to go home early. There was always some great excuse as to why I didn't want to, you know, sit down and practice the drum, but he would come anyway, put the drum in my lap, and within 20 minutes, I would have transformed from this cranky woman to someone who was just having a great time playing on this drum. So that really led us into almost immediately opening the school, and the school really opened when we opened my gallery on Sunday mornings to the public for families. We had mothers and fathers and children come to drum on Sunday mornings. We had grandparents. I mean, we just had just a huge variety of people come, and it was, it was truly, truly amazing. So that was really the very, very beginning of um, what we now call the Young Fish School of World Drumming. So it's been, an, it's been an amazing, amazing journey, and we have incorporated all of my energy work into our classes now. So it has made it just absolutely outstanding. So Bob, maybe, um, Maybe you could tell us a little bit more about um, some of the places that we work in and that. Well, yes, kind of um, we uh, service, uh, so to speak, uh, we conduct global drumming assemblies uh, for K through 12. Uh, uh, we do community um, gatherings, uh, festivals. Uh, we're, we're performers as well as teachers. And um, uh, we do have a niche for special needs. Uh, which uh, is, has been, um, we've been quite successful with, uh, as well as being a resident artist in the Rhode Island State Hospitals. Uh, and uh, we, uh, you know, those are ba our basic... Uh, you know, we did, we, we actually brought some film with us um, for um, our special needs organizations, we have two. We started doing work with the J. Arthur Trudeau Center in Warwick, Rhode Island, originally. But the film we brought uh, to show all of you is of a new class in uh, Fall River, Mass., People, Inc. And they have been just amazing. They were very, very open to having us include the energy work along with the drumming class. Not only did they do that, but they also um, brought me in personally to teach their staff how to, how to use the energy work. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to be doing our regular stuff today, but we're going to do some special things, too. We're going to make a film of us. Isn't that Hi. awesome? And... So we're going to start our film today by doing what? We're going to do our energy exercises, right? So what do we do first? What do we do first? That's it. We rub our hands together. Everybody rub your hands together. Devon, are you going to do it with us? Sure. Thank you. You look beautiful today. Yeah, yeah, no. My yes. name's Jane, no, no. Okay. okay, let's shake them off. Shake them off, shake them off, Sammy, shake them off. Good job, good job, good job. Mm -hmm. All right, let's start up here and let's tap under our eyes. What are we doing? We're going to send some energy to our brain, right? Huh? Is that what we're doing? We're going to send some energy to our brain. Awesome. Very, very, very nice. Now let's come down here and tap our K27 spots. Two hands. Two hands, Sammy. That's it. Tap, 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 tap. Up, 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 up. Good job, Me. good job, good job. <gasps> awesome. Mm -hmm. Let's move down. That's it. Good job, Joe. Let's come up here. Up there. That's it. Good job, David. David, tap, 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 tap. Can you tap? Tap, tap. Okay, tap, 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 tap. Awesome. All right, let's come down in the middle and tap here. Good job, right in the middle. See him again, in the middle. In the middle. Good job, good job. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm going to help you do some tapping. Maybe let's tap right here. Good job, buddy. Nice, 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 nice. Good job, good job, good job. Okay. Now what do we do? On our sides like little monkeys. Let's tap, 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 tap. Yeah, that's the way, buddy. 
That's it. Let's tap over here. <sighs> okay, let's rub our hands. Mm. Let's shake them off. Mm. Okay, what do we do? We cross our ankles. Let's cross our ankles. Everybody who can. Good job, Jill. Mm. Oh, okay. Can you cross your ankles? Okay. Let's cross our ankles. Okay. One hand out. The other hand out. Cross them over. Hold hands. And let's tuck them up to our heart. Okay, that's everybody. Get your hands up to your heart. Good job, Diane. Good job. Nice, 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 everybody. Okay, let's take a deep breath in. Mm. Again. Good job. One more time. <sighs> nice, nice, nice. Okay, let's make our hands like a steeple. Put our thumbs between our eyebrows and lift up. Take a breath. <sighs> Take another deep breath. And again. All right, let's pull them across our forehead. What are we doing? Huh? What are we doing when we're doing this? We are unscrambling our brain, right? So that we can learn drumming today, right? That's what we're going to do. We're going to learn drumming today again. All right, let's shake it off. All right, are we ready to march? Okay, here we go. Straight up and down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now what do we do? We cross over? One, two, three. Miss Devon, can you walk that way? Okay. 
Wasn't that fantastic? It's, it's so incredible to see them um, be able to do the energy exercises and then do their warm-ups and be able to play rhythms even after that. But enough about our special needs classes and let's go to a full school assembly. Um, we, we go to schools and uh, set up a, an array of drums and Right now, we're going to travel to India. Maybe, maybe you, Bob, could talk about the India performance. That would be great. Yes, so we're, what we're going to be doing is, um, is explaining Indian classical rhythms. Uh, uh, Diana is going to be conducting the children and how uh, the uh, people count in India. And um, I'm going to be uh, playing uh, sounds uh, of the tabla, uh, the syllables, the articulation, and um, and so uh, y we work as a team on this particular uh, aspect of it, and it's been very, very successful. So, um, do you have anything to add to that, Diana? Um, just that the kids really, really, really enjoy being getting to be a part of the whole performance. So, and as they learn this clave rhythm, they learn a little bit about how to count. They learn to get to, uh, it's almost like a Simon Says or a call and response, which is really outstanding uh, within our assembly. So all of that's like great fun for them. Yeah, we're gonna be visiting India and then we're gonna go on to clave. Other, yes, we uh, go on and on and to other countries and, and travel the, across the mm. world using the map. So, I don't know. It's like <laughs> I wish that we had the tabla here this evening. We would be able to uh, to demonstrate it for you, but um, you'll get to see a great performance uh, on this video. So, I'm just going to give you an example of how the instrument sounds. This is a car, and that's yeah, so this is a tabla. And it's a tabla. And this is D dominance. This is a little bit more. So what do you say? D And this is D. Okay, so let's go, let's let's see. D should be able to check it out. Keep it up. D D D D D D D D D D D D D D Okay, now let's play what's called a team. Can you say team? Team. So let's go. Team. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 
But this is what we're going to do, the school's going to do. Everyone, we're going to do one, two, three, one, two, and on three, we're going to flip our hand over. Three and four. Now, Bob, wasn't that fun? Oh, it was great. Doing, doing the tabla demonstration with the kids is like always amazing. Lots but of it, fun. It's always lots of fun. And, you know, now it's like even more fun to get to travel to another part of the world, go to West Africa, mm -hmm. and teach the kids the clave, which is also the heart of all Latin music. Cuba. Cuba. <laughs> all the Cuba and all those folks that ended up in New Orleans and created the jazz rhythm. Bo Diddley. Bo Diddley. <laughs> and isn't it fun to sing the Bo Diddley song and have them repeat their favorite ice cream and candy? They <laughs> absolutely love it. So we'll do that. But in addition to doing that, Maybe we could just show them a little bit about the body drumming. The body drumming is outstanding. Mm -hmm. The kids love the body drumming. It's a real challenge for them to get to, um, you know, just do the whole rhythm and... Yeah, have, synchronizing with us in the time. <laughs> synchronizing with the time is absolutely right. Yes. It is good. Mm -hmm. So, is there anything else you wanted to say about, about Clave? I, you know. Well, clave is a, a really wonderful rhythm. It, um, you know, uh, in, in the New Orleans area, you know, it has that uh, flavor of, uh, you know, it can be Cajun or whatever, you know, it could be... Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, in, uh, in Cuba, uh, it's it's you know very quick, and uh, they use the clave, which is right here, and we have uh, it goes like. Nice. I'm playing it lightly, so I won't hurt my ears. This is a very loud instrument. Actually, in Africa, originally there were no heads; everything was uh, hollowed uh, logs, and they would send messages. They were the first computer system, like sort of like Pony Express, so to speak. <laughs> Uh, in in, in uh, years gone by, and um, so uh, and then of course after clave we're going to be going to um, uh, do uh, West African mm -hmm. uh, juju a celebration rhythm. Okay. Uh, Diane is going to be leading that, and um, of course it's going to go in segments. And okay, so I guess we'll just. We get ready to show the film. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Sounds perfect. Since we've gone to North Africa and we went off the Middle East a little bit, and now we visited India, that we're going to go and get the roots of all of our rhythms. Scott, I can't do this because I'm down to kill this thing. It's like something called Mabe. And Kwame is a very, very special rhythm in Latin music, and it's these these are the instruments that are the Kwame. Can you imagine if there's a couple of little sticks? And that's our Kwame. Yeah, originally in Africa, because all of our rhythms in the Western Hemisphere come from uh, most, mostly West Africa, and then you expect something now called reggae going back from northern India. But um, Kwame. They, they didn't have skin drums like like this skin. They didn't have skin drums. They had this hollowed out logs, and they sent messages to each other. And and this rhythm um, became the basis for all that rhythm. Well, Thank 
Wasn't that fun? Yeah, it was a lot of that fun. That is always absolutely is. always fun. <laughs> uh, the kids are just always waiting to be able to announce what their favorite candy is. So it's mm -hmm. it's it makes or it ice very cream. or ice cream. It <laughs> makes it very very personal for them. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, in the next clip that we're going to to show, uh, we're going to go to Africa. But not only are we go going to go to Africa, we're going to have the kids come up to the full stage. They love getting to the full stage on the drums and getting, you know, having the opportunity to, to touch them, experience them, and have a lot of fun with them. So um, in addition to getting to touch them, they get to do a little solo action too. So that's mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they'll be up and running in just one second. What is better than that? Yeah, you know, these, these full school assemblies are just like the absolute best way to introduce the world drumming to the entire school. Yes. Or at least a grade level. Yes. So, so much of our work is based around that and the fact that the kids get to have an, an entree of sorts of the kinds of rhythms and the places that we will go around the world in a full school assembly. But what comes next is absolutely the best when we get involved with a classroom. And when we do get involved with a classroom, we usually what, start in West Africa? Usually, yes. Usually, or North Africa, which one? It doesn't well, we really actually matter. North Africa, and then we uh, go through India and to Asia, and then uh, back to West Africa and come to uh, the Americas, uh, you know, through the Arab slave trade or the uh, African slave trade, that, uh, because they, they did, uh, all our rhythms are uh, actually, you know, from West Africa and, uh, and now North Africa, as, as in the, or, or Northern and India, as in the case of reggaeton. Yep, and the kids love reggaeton. They oh, yeah. love, absolutely get crazy. By the time we end up going through North Africa, mm -hmm. get to America, do a little jazz, hear how the jazz evolved into what became hip hop. Hip hop is now reggaeton. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a fabulous opportunity it is for them to 
to get to see all of this and get to experience all this and even learn more about multicultural uh, diversity. Yeah, for the most part, they, they you know, uh, it's not necessarily taught, uh, but um, although we do design, uh, as you're the designer of the curriculum, and uh, working with the schools uh, it, in their um, history department or wherever they happen to be conducting their studies around the world. Yep. And uh, we, at one time we were asked to do specifically, uh, I think it was Lebanon, and uh, and then uh, you know might be Middle East. It could be Africa. It could be Cuba, uh, wherever. Well, we the always focus we is. always um, we always manage to put a curriculum together to suit the needs mm -hmm. of whatever facility we're going to. Mm -hmm. The hands-on workshops are are just amazing way to do that. Mm -hmm. And you know it, it's not only about the um, perhaps in the school, but maybe an after-school program. After-school programs are a must these days. People are busy and the kids need great stuff to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's that's a great way too. And, you know, another way to have workshops too are summer summer programming. Yes, we've done we've many done of those. We've done tons of summer programming, mm -hmm. not for regular populations as well as for kids with special needs. Yes. Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. Oh yeah, we've uh, had private camps. parties. Private parties, <laughs> birthday yes. parties, birthday parties, celebrations. Have, yes, 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 yes. That's that's always fun to mm -hmm. to be able to um, introduce world drumming to a three year old. Yeah. Forget about grade school and junior high school. Sure. What about what about all the programming that we've done for middle school, high schools, and we've even gone to places like URA yes, and introduced our uh, world drumming there and yeah. had those students that were already evolved in their musicality mm -hmm. get to learn more about world drumming. And one of the uh, essential things that we do actually is invite musicians, uh, especially in those situations like yeah. URI, to come and uh, perform with us. So we'll yeah. teach them uh, essentially the, the, a world rhythm and then we jam on it. Uh, people Absolutely like Joe too. Perillo and oh, his yes. students yes, uh, from yes. URI. Yep. Uh, so uh, it's very, very fulfilling for them because they may not have actually known uh, about a, a world rhythm before. Because usually in the states they're used to, you know, hip hop and jazz and pop, and uh, this gives them a chance to expand and be aware of uh, different cultures. Of course, it's it's always lots of fun also to be able to bring in some. Um, ladies who do Middle Eastern dancing uh, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we can probably get ready to segue into our next adventure, which is a summer program, a mm -hmm. global drum gathering. This drum is called a djembe. Are you all familiar with the djembe? It comes from West Africa. It's made from a big old tree, and a goat gave it skin to make the top of the drum. And we are going to demonstrate this drum for you. And the lead drummer plays something that's called a break. And Bob's going to be the lead drummer today, so he's going to play the break, and that is a signal for me to begin, or any other drummers who might be playing. So we'll wait for the break. And we're going to play a rhythm for you called Juju. Can everybody say Juju? Oh, Juju! Juju! And Juju Nigeria. is from Nigeria, country in Africa. Now you should know that in Nigeria, can you imagine your neighborhood in 4,000 years from now? Just think about that. In Nigeria, the neighborhoods there, there are four to 6,000 years old just in recorded history. And um, we're also going to be playing these Diana. are called Junjun and Kunkini. We're going to play those. Small ones are Kunkini, the larger ones are Junjun. And uh, our teachers are from Mali. Um, they're um, Isa Kulibali and Seidu Kulibali. And uh, they play Jimbe and Junjun, respectively. That is, Isa, G, Isa Kulibali plays, uh, is an outstanding Jimbe player. And Seidu Kulibali is an outstanding Junjun player. So we're going to uh, give you a, an example of a celebration rhythm, Juju, from Nigeria.
Well, that was fun. Yes, definitely. And uh, this next clip is something I really wanted people to see because of your brilliance, actually. Oh, uh, Bob. <laughs> Diana's going to play Jun Jun on um, uh, Nigerian uh, Juju. And uh, also, I do uh, what we call name recognition. I sing a little bit, and uh, which uh, sort of empowers everyone to, you know, keep the rhythm going, so to speak. Okay. And uh, so, um, uh, June June is a very expressive instrument, and there it. Uh, you'll hear uh, Diana, of course. They're really explain. awesome instruments. They're they're very very big. They're if you were talking about a drum set, you would call them the tom toms. Is they're, that correct? They're very deep tom toms. They're very or bass deep drums. tom toms, and they give off a very bassy kind of sound. It's fabulous. Why don't we just watch the film? the djembe's that we were just playing. And, and, they sort of play the melody, or the bottom, the bass. So, once again, Bob will give us a signal, and we'll I'll play a little, I'll be, June June in the company. I'll play a little slower this time, you can clap along. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> I really like to play fast, though. You know, when you sing, I can't play so fast, but oh. I know you like to sing and talk to all the guys and the kids and <laughs> all that good kind of stuff. But, you know, we have, you know, another segment that's coming up is all about the children getting to play some of the hand percussion. Yes. And we have a lot of great stuff for hand percussion that we hardly ever get to really talk about very much. And even here with us today, we have some incredible stuff. We have these absolutely gorgeous shakers that are um, from Nigeria, I think. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where those are from, but this shake array is also amazing. Can you imagine that they have made such an incredible instrument with a gourd? This is simply a gourd. It's hand painted and filled with these magnificent shells from the beach. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? This is a gorgeous Women one. Women usually play and there's lots of ways to address them. It's, it's, it's just amazing, the instruments that they have in, mm -hmm. in that collection. Yeah, we've used tambourines. And yeah. um, here's the other smaller shaker, eh? This is a, a wood block, actually. Hey, the wood block is, the wood um, block is awesome. And, um, and of course, these are ankle bells, which uh, we don't always use, but uh, these are uh, used in Indian uh, katak dancing, uh, classical Indian. Yeah, but uh, even in, in the West African stuff, they like to put those on their, oh yeah, on their legs and be able to just keep time mm -hmm. with those instruments. But, you know, the clip that we're going to is, like, really wonderful because the kids love to come up and get to play all the different kinds of instruments. Yeah, these, are, these are all hands-on programs that we have. So we make sure that the children, all of the children get instruments and you know, uh, have a, a sense of fulfillment uh, from being part of 
uh, the, the whole ensemble. The, on the, on the whole ensemble. And and in Africa, that's what it's all about anyway. There's always there's always djembe players. There's a lead player who plays djembe. Master drummers. The master drummer, the junjun player. Everyone has special instruments that they play. So, I guess we can just go right to the clip. Mm -hmm. Bob, maybe you'll want to tell everyone about the Millennium Commission and how we got to go to Water Place Park to begin with, and all of the incredible musicians that we got to play with. Although I don't think that they're on the video, so. Um, but anyway, why don't, you, why don't you tell everybody about that? Well, it was, in, uh, uh, it was about probably 1998, 1999. Doris Stevens, who was head of First Night Providence, uh, went to the governor of the state, Lincoln Almond. And uh, she said, let's do something special for the millennium. So they created a fund uh, that would empower artists to create a very special works for the millennium. And I think, mm -hmm. we're, I think Rhode Island may be the only state that actually did it. Wow. And I was very lucky. I was awarded one of those. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result, Diana and I uh, were featured artists with the Rhode Island Philharmonic in January of 2000. Pretty cool. And the indigenous meets the Philharmonic. Yes, and uh, new. yeah, and uh, Judah Sanqua uh, orchestrated. I collaborated with her on the piece. She's a world-class composer and educator, and uh, and then uh, subsequently uh, there was other uh, opportunities that happened at that time. Uh, this was one of them. They had the uh, Convergence Festival, um, Cap Arts. Uh, 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 Bob Rizzo uh, was the head of Cap Arts at the time. Was that the festival that we went to and we got the whole audience playing? Everybody was playing? Exactly, exactly. A bunch of students from our school yes, and our from students. Our, the art gallery. Yes, yes. Everyone came. That yes. was just an amazing, amazing event. We had people as young as three years old. Yeah, yeah, I we, had, we little, had little kids. All coming. ages. Yeah, it was, right. that was a very huge festival at yeah. that time. We had great dancers. We had a Middle Eastern dancer from Manhattan come. She was amazing. We had a hip hop. Andrea. Andrea Beeman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Mark, Mark Fisher, Fisher was uh, it also. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable, yeah. unbelievable. Yes. And it was all because you won that Millennium Commission. Yeah, we were, we were very blessed uh, at that time. And uh, uh, that subsequently, that also led to uh, uh, me uh, getting the fellowship in music composition. Uh, for 2002 from the Rhode Island State Council of the Arts, yeah. which uh, was a, a very uh, honor. I'm very honored to have Well, let's go that. to the clip and show everybody our stuff. Okay.
Bravo, Maestra. Will you tell me when? Bravo, Maestra. Hey, that was <laughs> fun, wasn't it? Yes, it was a wonderful, wonderful event. Yeah. And um, uh, we're maybe we'll get to do that again someday. Who knows, right? Yeah. Well, well we have done several of those, you know, and we'd I love know. to do more. I know. You know what, Bob? I think we should just like um, maybe do a couple of thank yous and and hit the drums. Okay. I think maybe people would like to hear us play. Well, a we bit. we do want to thank the Somerville Producers Group, and uh, especially Susan Allen, and. Um, uh, Ju Joe, Joe uh, Lariccia <laughs> uh, for, uh, you know, being so wonderful to us and making this all possible. Absolutely. And all the rest of the crew that yeah, and uh, this we wonderful uh, crew that they have here. They're, I'm getting chills just thinking about all you people. Thank Maybe, you. Thank you. Thank I you. I think you. we should play an Egyptian rhythm to begin with and end with Zar, which is another Egyptian rhythm, but the kids call it reggaeton. That's right. So all we're right. going to do we go. uh, Gawazi and uh, here we go.